I have this flight model P-51D. It's a great flying model. I've had it for a couple of years and it flew well until one day on a botched go around I gave it full throttle and in true P-51 fashion it torque rolled, crashed into a concrete retaining wall that's beside the runway, over the wall, down the embankment, into some trees and it was a mess. It has a film covering for the wings and for part of the tail feathers. And I never did like that. I wanted to go ahead and change that. So here's an opportunity to do that. I was walking through the plastic modeling section of a hobby shop one day and I came upon this kit. It's a 124 scale P51 Mark IVA or P51K, which is the British version of the P51D. And I was immediately smitten with it. I thought it would be so neat to try to emulate the camo scheme and the weathering that was shown on the box art. So I had the airframe, I had the camo scheme, now it's time to put the two together. Here's what I took home after the fateful crash. The first thing to do was to strip all the covering from both wings. You can see here that the left wing got the brunt of the damage. The right wing damage was very minor. I needed to add a leading edge, a spar, or spars, top and bottom, some ribs, and some sheeting. With the leading edge and the ribs, I added oversized pieces, which would be easy to shape to the required profile. And since the ribs were butt joint to the leading edge, I added some gussets for strength. The ribs were sanded to the profile based on the existing sheeting, and then I went back over them with a compass and marked 1 16th of an inch to sand away to account for the new sheeting. When it came to replacing the spars, I did not simply want to glue in a new spar but joined with the old spars. That would have been very weak. So instead I made an oversized spar overlapping each end of the new spar about one inch with the existing spar and that basically gives me one continuous spar. One last thing I did to increase the strength of this repair was to add shear webs between the new ribs and the new spars, thereby locking them all together. You'll notice that the original design does not have shear webs at all. I also had to remove some sheeting after the spars to repair a busted rib, and then the whole repaired area was sheeted. The wings on this flight model P-51 are ready to be glassed. On the trailing edge, it had a really thick trailing edge. I didn't like that at all. So I added just a little bit of material and then sanded it down and it's still a little bit thick especially on this wing right here but it was about the best that i could do the problem becomes this end right here meeting up with the fairing and the fuselage if i made this longer it would stick well past that fairing it wouldn't look good i'm using a three quarter ounce fiberglass cloth and a two hour pot life resin for fiberglassing this model I use a playing card to spread a thin layer of resin over the entire fiberglass. I then come back with peel ply, and for me this is 100% polyester, and a stiffer plastic card to pull the excess resin up into the peel ply. After letting the resin cure overnight, I remove the peel ply. So this gives a fairly nice, smooth finish. With pill ply, now at this point, you could go straight to a high build primer and there really shouldn't be any pinholes. Um, so I guess the point being is you don't really need to put on a second flow coat with this. So I'll take this straight to primer. When it came to the tail feathers, I was a little bit unsure what to do. Overall, they're in pretty good shape. I got a couple of little dings on both sides, but overall they're in good shape. They survived the little mishap. Their horizontal stab elevator and the rudder is covered in film. The vertical fin is part of the fiberglass fuselage. So I think what I'm going to do is strip it all off, fiberglass it. The uh, elevator is open bay. Looking at some reference material, the elevators were metal skinned. 
And from what I can tell from the photos that I have, the runner was fabric covered. Because the elevator will be sheeted, I had to remove the film covering. I did not think that I could get it completely off the rounded leading edge, so I cut it back to the hinge gap opening. When I fiberglass, it will be fiberglassed only to the edge of the film because the fiberglass and resin will not stick to that film covering. Remove the covering and then I sanded back the ribs. I need to add 1 16th inch sheeting. So I sanded back the ribs as best I could, about roughly 16th of an inch. And then I'm going to have this piece of balsa sheeting right here, which I'm going to glue in. One of the goals here with these elevators is to try to thin down the trailing edge a little bit. I believe I have it about as thin as I can make it without going uh, through the sheeting or making it too thin. It also helps I rounded it over a little bit as opposed to from the factory as you can see it's squared off and that also helps to make the trailing edge look a little bit thinner so I think it looks better it's an improvement it's not perfect but it is an improvement and with a little bit of putty both of these elevators should be ready for glassing time to glass the elevators it's not going to be as easy trying to glass these because they are already glued in with the hinges and they have the control horns glued in as well. What I'm going to try to do is just get the fiberglass right up against the covering uh, edge. I cut a straight line there and I'm not going to have it go all the way around. There's no way I could do that. Fiberglassing is done for the horizontal stab in the elevators. I didn't get any epoxy into the joints here. The elevators move freely. So that was a nice little plus. The, uh, because I used the peel ply, everything feels very, very nice and smooth. It is ready for a coat of high build primer. I'm sure that primer will probably show up some flaws and imperfections that need to be taken care of, but that's the job of the primer to show you that. One of the challenges of painting this fiberglass fuselage was the insignia and the markings. They were either molded into the gel coat of the fuselage or they were applied as stickers afterwards. At any rate, I had to remove the raised areas because otherwise they would telegraph through the new paint job and you'd have stars and bars on a British aircraft. And that just wouldn't do. So I used a quarter sheet palm sander with 120 grit sandpaper to sand down those raised areas. The trick of course was to sand just the raised areas in the gel coat and not go too far into or through the fiberglass. I have the rudder covered. I use coverall for that. It worked fairly well considering the rudder is permanently attached. So it wasn't quite as easy as attaching fabric would be 
with the rudder not glued in. I used uh, Mod Podge again and I applied two coats. Uh, to do that, I basically dipped my brush in a cup of water, then dipped it in the Mod Podge and applied it to the wood parts. That does a pretty good job of thinning the Mod Podge, just the right amount. Two coats was good for this. I think some of that wood had already been basically sealed from the plastic covering that had been on it before. And uh, once the mod, second coat of Mod Podge had dried, I applied the fabric. I set my iron to about uh, 300 degrees. I used an infrared thermometer for that. And I tacked around all the edges and then with that done i reset the iron to about the lowest possible setting all the way down to the left and with the infrared thermometer that showed about 250 degrees fahrenheit and i went over the open areas just enough to get rid of any wrinkles i didn't really tighten it down tight just a light pressure and just enough to get wrinkles out then i trimmed off the excess and before I applied the second side of the fabric, I went over the seam one more time with some more Mod Podge. After that dried, I applied the second uh, side of the fabric and trimmed all that down. So it's pretty much ready. I did have some fuzzies uh, with this uh, polyester fabric is what cover all is. To take care of that, I brushed on another coat of the Mod Podge, let it dry, set my iron to about 300 degrees, and then basically kind of melted in the fuzzies in with the Mod Podge. Any other fuzzies that were left, I used a coat of uh, water-based sanding sealer. Once that dried, I used 120 grit sandpaper to shear them off. Using a two-part automotive primer also does a great job at stiffening the fuzzies. They can be sheared with two 20 grit sandpaper. Inside here, it's just really difficult to get that fabric to cut cleanly. Um, so I do have a little bit of a, a fuzzy area, if we will, right here. I've tried to clean it up as best I could. I brushed on a thick coat of automotive high build primer. Just use an old cheap paintbrush for this. I just really kind of glop it on. Now it's time to wet sand with some 220 grit sandpaper. The primer's been sanded back. It took me about three hours, I guess, of wet sanding. Not too bad. A couple areas did require some spot putty. On the bottom, there's a few more areas than this. The bottom wasn't in quite as good a shape as the top, but not too bad. I don't plan on doing much additional detailing to the P51. All I really want to do is get the paint scheme on it and go fly it again. Besides, the manufacturer does a pretty nice job themselves of some of the detailing. They've actually molded in panel lines on this fiberglass fuselage and also the representation of the screw heads. P51 has quite a few screws on the front of the cow and the airplane and along the wing saddle so the manufacturer they, they i applaud them for getting these details in unfortunately what they've done is they've made it a recessed hole these screw heads are all counter or the kind of they're kind of like the countersunk and on a real airplane they're not real airplane the screw heads are flush with the surrounding sheeting but the manufacturer here has uh, kind of inset them. They're about 15 thousandths of an inch deep. And that kind of bothers me. The, the, the panel lines I'm going to leave. I, I mean, I can probably live with those. They're a little bit wide for my taste, but I'm just going to live with that. But these screw heads, that really irritates me. So I want to try to fix that. Now, at first, what I did was I used some putty uh, not on this part, on, on, some, on a busted up cow. Uh, I practiced on that. And I put some putty over these screw heads and then sanded it off and hoping that that would just kind of fill in. But that putty, it does shrink a little bit as it dries. 
And so that kind of made kind of a concave area and I didn't like that either. And if I put a second layer of putty on and that would probably just make completely smooth and you'd obliterate all the detail altogether. So I didn't want that either. So what I decided was to take some 15th uh, thousandths of an inch styrene and basically cut uh, screw heads to glue in. So I've taken a, a uh, where'd it go? Here it is. I'm not sure what size uh, brass tube this is, um, but it ends up being just the right size to fill the screw heads. Um, I sharpened the end of it and then I punched holes. The, uh, the styrene ends up getting kind of stuck inside the brass tube. So you just kind of pop it out with the wire. And it's really small when it comes out of the tube. It's about 1 16th of an inch. So I roll it uh, with this large X-Acto handle and it flattens it back out again. Put a drop of glue on it and I glue it in place. I'm really, I'm really pretty pleased with these uh, screw heads. They do pretty much sit flush now with the, with the top of the fuselage and that's the whole point and I think that's going to look really good when it gets paint on it. Now this represents about, I think it's between 350 and 400 of these little screw heads. This is the styrene that I cut it out of. I'm going to let all this now dry, the glue dry thoroughly overnight, and then I'll come back with some 60 grit, very light touch, sanding the 60 grit. Some of these are sticking a little bit proud. I couldn't quite get them completely flush. So I'll just use the light 60 grit and sand, uh, sand everything down so hopefully I can get them all pretty smooth and pretty uh, flush with the uh, rest of the fuselage. The original factory uh, chin scoop, or chin cowl, I guess you'd call it, has these three holes here in the bottom. I guess they are for a gas engine. I don't need those, and I really didn't want them, so I'm going to fill them in. What I've elected to do is to take manila folder and just cut out a little bit of manila folder to cover these three holes. I CA the edges in so that they were nice and flush. And then I flooded the rest of this with thin CA to make it tough. Now what I'll do is go in with some epoxy micro balloons, fill in these, and then sand that down flush. And I think that'll work really well.